Hello everyone, today I bring you the latest disaster blockbuster of 2024, Survive. A family of four wakes up on a yacht and is horrified to discover that the vast ocean has turned into dry land. More alarmingly, an unknown multi-legged creature is rampantly devouring all living things. What exactly is going on? This story starts a few days earlier. Tom and his family are on a yacht heading to the high seas for a vacation. The sea appears calm, hang, and the spring is in full swing. However, by evening, their daughter Cassie is video calling her boyfriend and sees storm clouds and lightning in the background, suggesting an ominous omen. Before she can finish her speaking, the call suddenly drops. Cassie feels uneasy as she notices groups of whales swimming toward land. Tom suggests that a storm might be causing magnetic disturbances, disorienting the whales. As they speculate about this, a whale suddenly collides with the yacht, damaging the engine and leaving it unable to move forward. Fortunately, they are on a shipping route where they could theoretically wait for rescue. However, their radar suddenly detects a fast approaching object. The family rushes out of the cabin just in time to see a meteor streaking through the night sky, trailing flames as it plunges into the sea. Tom tries to steer the yacht away, but it remains immobile no matter how hard he tries. Just then, another meteor streaks overhead and crashes into the nearby sea. The four are terrified and can only retreat to the cabin, lock the doors and windows, put on life jackets, and pray they survive the ordeal. After a long wait, the storm gradually subsides. Tom bravely steps out first, only to be shocked and speechless by the sight. The sea has completely vanished, leaving only a barren seabed. As they recover from the shock, they start to consider their next steps. Tom takes out a compass, only to find that north and south are entirely reversed, with the magnetic field in total disarray. The ocean has turned into land and the land into the sea, a scenario too incredible, but they must face the challenge of survival. Julia begins to gather the remaining food while Tom repairs the radio to contact the outside world. Ben releases balloons into the sky, hoping to attract other survivors' attention. Tom increases the radio's power and finally picks up a voice. The person, now, claims to be a deep sea surveyor and explains that the disaster was indeed caused by a reversal of the magnetic field, which submerged the land in the ocean. According to him, the magnetic field will return to normal in a week and the sea will recede. With such a grave crisis, now advises Tom's family to retreat to higher ground. Yet the problem is they can't leave the seabed within seven days. Tom desperately asks if they can take shelter in Now's submarine. Julia quickly joins in, pleading as well, stating she is a doctor and begging him to save the children. Now eventually gives them his coordinates. Tom immediately marks Now's coordinates on the map, estimating a two to three day journey to reach him. This news gives the couple a sigh of relief as survival seems within reach. They decide to rest on the boat for the night and set off the next day. The next morning, Julia and Cassie are busy organizing food while Tom stands on deck surveying the surroundings. At that moment, a man, staggering and armed with a hunting dog, approaches them. Thrilled to see another survivor, Tom eagerly goes up to greet him. However, the man does not respond and just stares at the water bottle in Tom's hand. Seeing the man's wretched condition, Tom's heart softens and he hands over the water bottle. Seeing this from the cabin, Julia also comes out to offer a welcome, but the moment the man finishes the water, he suddenly uses the bottle to knock Tom to the ground, then grabs a weapon, brutally stabs Tom in the abdomen, and swiftly thrusts it towards his throat. The scene terrifies Julia, who never expected to witness her husband die in front of her. In panic, she turns to run, but the man attacks her as well. Fortunately, the weapon only raises her. Enduring the pain, Julia rushes back to the cabin, hides her children under the seats, gives Cassie a flare gun for protection, and takes a dagger herself, hiding on the lower level to counterattack. Soon, the man bursts into the cabin and begins devouring the food. He then starts searching for Julia. He breaks open a door, but finds no one inside. In fact, Julia has already crawled through a hole to the outside of the ship, hiding below, holding her breath, not daring to make a sound. Just as the man is about to leave, his hunting dog suddenly lunges at Julia. With no choice left, she fights back with her knife. Hearing the noise, the man runs out of the cabin, sees his beloved dog lying on the ground, and is overwhelmed with grief. Meanwhile, Julia has quietly circled back to the bow, crawled through a broken window into the cockpit, and attempts to escape with her children. Unfortunately, she's knocked down after only a few steps by the man. Now completely maddened by the death of his dog, he steps on Julia's wrist, forcing her to release the dagger, then tightly chokes her neck. As Julia is about to suffocate, Cassie can no longer hold back. She suddenly stands up, aims the flare gun at the man, 
and pulls the trigger. The powerful impact sends the man staggering backward, but also sparks a large fire inside the cabin. Julia quickly leads her children out of the cabin, grabbing the map marked with Now's location. It is their last hope. After escaping to the deck and seeing his father's body on the ground, Ben is devastated, begging for his dad to wake up. Julia and Cassie are also overwhelmed by grief. But just as they are lost in sorrow, Julia sees the man emerging from the blazing fire, sending her a new wave of fear. She quickly grabs her children, and they flee desperately. While escaping, Ben is drawn to a strange stranded fish and reaches to touch it. At that moment, the relentless man appears around the corner. She urgently pulls Ben, and they run as fast as possible. The three dash across the dry seabed, navigating a poisonous marsh and passing through a trash-littered area, their energy fading. Noticing Ben's pale face, Julia realizes he's suffering from severe dehydration and decides they should rest briefly. When she takes out the water bottle, she finds only a sip left. Feeling guilty, Cassie admits she forgot to tighten the cap after drinking, causing the water to leak out. Furious, Julia scolds her daughter, while Cassie, feeling hopeless, declares they are doomed. Tensions flare, and they argue bitterly. Eventually, frustrated, Julia decides to move on with Ben, leaving Cassie to follow reluctantly. After climbing a hill, they spot a crashed plane just as night begins to fall. Julia decides they'll spend the night inside. Although the cabin is filled with dirt and seaweed, they have no choice. It's the only shelter available. They settle down to rest as best they can. In the dead of night, Cassie feels the urge to step outside quietly, unaware that the man is silently following her. At a critical moment, Julia, driven by a fierce maternal instinct, charges out like a madwoman, clutching a knife and stabbing the man repeatedly while screaming wildly. Cassie, shocked, pulls her mother back, calming her down. The man, now covered in stab wounds, succumbs. By dawn, when the three leave the plane, they find unknown creatures have grotesquely mutilated his body. Julia quickly realizes there's something far more dangerous lurking around them. They hurry on, unaware that two young king crabs are slowly crawling out of the man's corpse. Under the scorching sun, Ben's strength begins to fail. Ignoring his mother's warnings, he throws himself into a dirty pool of water, drinking it eagerly. Julia and Cassie quickly pull him out, warning him that the water could be full of deadly bacteria, but it's too late. Ben's condition worsens, and he can barely walk. When they reach a clearing, he collapses completely, unable to stand. Julia and Cassie quickly use a plastic sheet to create a makeshift shade. Exhausted, all three eventually fall into a deep, despairing sleep. Just after sunset, Julia is awakened by a strange sound and groggily steps out of the makeshift shelter. She is horrified to see a chilling sight that instantly reveals what had devoured the man's body. Her heart pounds as she quickly wakes her children, and the three sprint away, but the creatures are right behind them, giving them barely a moment to breathe. Fortunately, after crossing a hill, Julia spots a capsized cargo ship ahead with several workers gathering supplies. She calls for help, but the workers, seeing the approaching creatures, panic and rush to hide in a shipping container, ignoring her cries. With no other choice, Julia climbs onto a container with her children, only to see the creatures fully revealed, a swarm of giant king crabs. A few crabs leap up and claw Julia's leg, while more pour into the container through gaps. Although the workers desperately fire at them, the swarm is too large and the workers are quickly overrun. Julia and her children narrowly survive, but she passes out from blood loss. When she wakes up, she is alone and panics, frantically climbing down to search for her children. She soon spots a shotgun beside a worker's body and grabs it for protection. Luckily, Cassie and Ben haven't gone far. They gather supplies nearby. After reuniting, Julia tends to her leg wound. Carefully, she empties gunpowder from a bullet onto the wound, igniting it to stop the bleeding, bearing the pain until the bleeding stops. Julia then leads the children into a container full of bodies, instructing Ben to pick up a weapon and a radio. After adjusting the frequency, they finally reconnect with Now. When he hears about the King Crab attack, Now reveals that he too was once pursued by these creatures. He explains that the crabs originally lived deep in ocean crevices, but the receding waters cut off their food sources, forcing them to hunt in packs. Worse, Now shares shocking news. The timeline for the sea's return has accelerated, leaving Julia shaken. Adding to their troubles, in their frantic escape, Julia lost the map, leaving them uncertain of the way forward. Upon hearing this, Now decisively fires a signal flare into the sky. They quickly head toward the flare and, finally, 
spot the submarine waiting in a valley. However, between them and the submarine lies a cliff teeming with king crabs. To survive, they carefully navigate the rocky ledges. But just as they are about to succeed, a cascade of rubble suddenly falls from above. Without hesitation, Julia pushes her children to safety, but becomes trapped in the rocky cliff. Seeing her path wholly blocked, Julia feels a wave of despair. She stops thinking about her escape, focusing only on her children's survival. Her final words pierce Cassie's heart and help her regain her composure. Cassie realizes there's no time to hesitate and pulls her reluctant brother Ben along, determined to find now and then return to save their mother. The siblings struggle to climb out of the rocks and rush to the submarine, only to find Now barely alive and severely wounded. Knowing he won't survive, Now places his last hope in them. Cassie refuses to abandon her mother, so she leaves Ben to care for Now and runs back to the cliff, ready to risk everything to save Julia. Meanwhile, the swarm of king crabs is closing in. Julia uses her gun to fight back. <laughs> shooting one only for more to swarm forward. She fires until her bullets are gone, but the crabs keep advancing. Desperate, she hides in a crevice, watching the creatures draw closer. At that moment, Cassie's voice calls down to her, and she reaches out to pull her mother up. Summoning her last ounce of strength, Julia climbs, grasping her daughter's hand, and finally escapes. Together, they dash toward the submarine as the crabs flood forward, quickly dragging Now's lifeless body away and beginning to swarm the submarine. Julia fires back to cover their retreat, urging her children inside before climbing in herself. Though momentarily safe inside the submarine, their hearts race as the swarm surrounds them, threatening to breach even their last refuge. Just then, Ben and Cassie notice a massive wave rising on the distant horizon, roaring toward them. The sight leaves them frozen in awe and terror, but Julia snaps to attention, quickly telling them to strap in. In an instant, the wave crashes down on the submarine like a giant hammer, sending it spinning wildly as if caught in an endless vortex. They're thrown around, unable to control anything. After an indeterminate time, the chaos finally quiets down. Miraculously, the submarine has survived the wave. When they emerge, though, they're met with a devastating sight. The city they once knew lies in ruins, lifeless and desolate as if Doomsday has returned to Earth. Staring at the wasteland, they realize a new survival challenge awaits them. That's the whole story of Survive. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel for more thrilling movie recaps. See you in the next video.